In this video we're looking at physically based shaders and the, the way that we can design them in Maya and have them look exactly the same in Unity when we're working with these. So to start with within Maya I'm going to set up a uh, new project. So I'm going to set file, set project, uh, create a new folder. PBS Maya. Um, I'll open that folder, enter that folder and I will set that as my folder. I'm also, well I'll create the default workspace, but I'll also set up the folders for my project um, because later on I'm going to be using the source images and I want to keep the source images and textures that I'll be using uh, within that folder. So to work with materials and textures we're really looking at rendering editors. So the rendering is what uh, will change your um, model into a give it a look rather than just having a geometric shape. So using Maya's hypershape window we can start to design some materials that we might want to work with. Now we have a list of different types of materials and um, I'm going to use the Stingray PBS but to make this I'm going to go to the create menu up here materials Stingray PBS. So I'm going to select this one and so you can see here I've got the um, different nodes for this and this is the way the uh, colors will connect so I can add in different elements to this but I'm, I'm really working with a very simple uh, demonstration to start with and this uh, um, image here will allow you to see what it's actually going to look like. There are some different settings you can choose um, but generally we're going to work directly with that. So selecting the different nodes allows us to get the different attributes that we might work with. So I'm selecting the Stingray PBS1 which is the name of the material I'm working with and we've got the properties as you would within the um, uh, attribute editor in the normal um, view of Maya um, but we're going to look initially at the first three items on here base color metallic and roughness now I do have a reference chart that I'm going to look at with this so I'm just going to bring that over and uh, in a moment we will find that so this is the unity reference chart. So we can look these up and we'll have a link for this um, as we need to. But what this is showing me is how the different settings will work. So the um, albedo, which is the overall color of the object, can be set to any of these. So for example, if I want to make gold, I can select this yellow color. And then I can work with the metallic scale, 0 to 1 in this instance, um, or smoothness um, also so a rough metal won't reflect accurately the environment there is some color showing up in there but a very smooth metal will reflect um, the, the uh, surroundings of the object so this chart really gives us a kind of good idea of how to make different aspects so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make gold here if I go back to Maya, so that was a Unity um, example, but it works the same here. So I'm, I'm working with base color, metallic, and roughness to start with. So selecting a color uh, within this, so I'm going to start with a yellow and slightly more orange and probably slightly darker as well. Um, gold does come in very different colors. You can get um, a range of hues that it will work with. And that's starting to be the base to what I'm working with. Now the next parameter here is metallic. And if I slide that up to one, I can see it's actually starting to show me this kind of highlighted uh, specular area here with the, um, that on it. I should be able to move around this object. If I hold down the Alt key, I can move that just like I would in a viewport. Um, it's not really showing up the environment but if I reduce the roughness I can actually see that that's a very shiny metal if I bring that down as well so I can, I can bring that to a certain level uh, where I can see this kind of 
skybox or kind of HDR image in the background or reflecting on it as well. So you can find your settings with that. I may be able to bring the metallic down slightly and you can see how it kind of looks a bit more plasticky um, with that. But I'll bring that back up to the top. And so if I go back to that chart, I can see how that the different colors will come will bring out different metals. So this gray would probably bring me a very steel color. Um, so if I wanted to have a separate, different style, I could just choose that within the, uh, within changing the color. So I've set up the um, kind of reflectiveness and the, the the smoothness. Here it says roughness, but alternatively you may find that to be smoothness, um, and that will set up a shader for you. So if I bring that in here, I can actually alter that one to uh, gold. And that will be uh, my material there as well. So I can use that as the material here. Um, similarly, if I want to make another one, I can create materials, PBS shader, uh, Stingray PBS, um, and I can change that one to uh, steel, bring the metallic up, um, and it's almost looking steel already. Uh, but you can see there, this grey colour is just giving me a very uh, chrome look for that. So you can adjust it just to be exactly how you want it to be and work with those in, in different ways. You can shortcut to create a material in that way, just using these, these menus here. Um, I'll try and teach you from the menus there as well. Uh, so finally we can go through and just check uh, different one they're very subtle differences within that uh, and that very white one would become uh, more silver and this pinker one uh, would become chrome so I can uh, copper so I can select that one there and then I can get a brass or copper type one and it's all to do with what exact color I'm working with whether it's brighter or darker um, probably a little less pink but that could give me a, a copper a copper look there as well so I'll just change that uh, there so now I've, I've done with the hypershade so I've done what I wanted to do there uh, these secondary nodes, just before I go, this has SG on the end. That's a shader group. Um, so that, if I'm not finding these, I can look up the shader groups. Uh, and that's the collection of items that will work with my objects. So now if I go back to my main viewport here, and if I set up a, a, a cylinder, into a disk I should be able to make a coin like object and I've already set up my materials so if I right click and hold it down on this object I can say assign existing material and I have these options in there already so I can see up here it has assigned the material gold to this but I'm not seeing it until I turn on this node here which is textured um, and the great thing about these Stingray uh, materials is that it does show it in the in a way, and it has the reflective aspects um, as you would see it within Unity. So if you get the right angles, you can see how those kind of you're getting elements in there of lighting that's affecting it. So I can make three of these. I'll make um, Another one in effect, I'll just duplicate it. So another option we can have is edit duplicate. Um, and I'll make a replica of that object. So now if I zoom out from the window, I should have two objects in the same place. And I can right click one, assign existing material. Uh, I'll start with copper on that one, which gives a slightly different look. And again, if I duplicate that, I will move 
that across and make this one, if I hold down the right click, silver, steel. So I've got my three different items in there. Uh, the steel is very reflective. You can see that sky in there um, because it's got that kind of, it's more, it's closer to white within that. Um, but I can start looking at how these look in Unity um, if I send these over to Unity in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to name these items. Uh, I'll just change the names just so that it comes across cleanly. Um, and it's worth taking time to do this. Um, otherwise, your scenes can get very messy. Um, and you can see how it puts an underscore in there. It doesn't doesn't use um, spaces in the namespaces of these, so you can't actually just press space. So it'll, it'll fill that in with an underscore if you've done that. So now I'm going to save the scene and add it to my scenes folder. Quick coins and press save. So after creating these initial items, I'm just going to start a new Unity project that I can bring this work into. Uh, so I'll create a new, select the uh, Unity build that I'm working with, the Unity um, application, and I'll call this PBS Unity. It's a project name and save that and set that up already. Um, that will take a short amount of time to compile and uh, bring in all the initial assets for that. Um, but I can already send these over to Unity from Maya. So I'll just ignore that Unity um, project setup window there. Um, and I'll go to the send to Unity tab. I'm gonna set the Unity project and open that up, find the assets. And what I'm going to do is just give this a folder uh, of models. Um, this is useful because what I may be doing is extracting um, items as I go. Uh, so I'm setting that folder up already. And I'm doing that from Maya because I haven't already opened in, in Unity, I haven't got the project open yet. But my actual project that I'm setting it to is PBS stroke Unity at the top top level of the, the project. And so now I've got the Unity jumping up and down. So I'm hoping that that has actually uh, compiled, but it may not have done. Um, While that's still going, I'm going to X, uh, send to Unity selection. So that's all three coins that I'm sending over. Then I will open the modeling folder. I do have this embed media option selected. Now I haven't actually embedded any textures to it. Um, so I think this should work without that. So I'm going to put PBS coins and export selection. So now within Unity, I can look in my models folder and drag my exported items into my scene. Um, now they are coins, so they are very small in the scene. Um, and I can see them in the scene window. Uh, but just to make it so that I can actually have a look at them uh, at a decent size and just see what uh, what effect they're having from the environment. Um, I can just turn them around and you can see that the light is moving on them. Now if I want to go further with this, I can uh, find some good textures. This website texturehaven.com has uh, a lot of textures that 
uh, work with physically based shaders. What you get with this is a lot of different types of maps um, that you can use within this. So I'm picking one that has a particularly strong uh, contour. So this one's a particularly uh, rounded item that I'm just going to have a look at. I can download all maps. So it actually has um, a good range of maps. I'm doing the PNG ones because they're uncompressed. Un um, and I'll save those down to uh, my downloads folder. Um, but if I just get another one or two at while I'm doing this. So I'll get a, uh, that's a roof tile. I kind of want a floor so I can actually filter these uh, as well. So I'm going to pick one which has uh, quite a bump on as well. So the different maps I've got ambient occlusion, diffuse, which is color, displacement, which is probably a height map, black and white height map, normal map, roughness, and rough ambient occlusion as well. So it's got a lot of maps within this. So I'll download all of those. And once they're downloaded, I will bring those into my Maya project. Let's find the folder there. So the folders are decompressed already, and I can bring those into my development folder where I have my Maya project set up, and I can drop those into source images. So once those are in there, I'll go back to Maya. Again, I can look at rendering editors hypershade and I can build a a new material with those as well. So create materials uh, PBS Stingray PBS and again here I have the nodes but this time I've got different maps on this node that I'm going to work with. So color map, normal map, and metallic map. Um, here I've changed the uh, the look to be a plane and uh, within this I can scroll down so I'm not using these three main items we used before but I can set a file for the color map and I go to here I look at diffuse DIFF open that up you can see it's not actually showing up in my window so slightly annoying um, but that's because I haven't checked the box to tell it to use the color map. So it's using the base color rather than a color map. Once I check that, that comes up and it starts to show me this color. Um, so I'll repeat that with the, the other items in here. And so we've got normal map. I can connect that one to NOR, which is stands for the normal map. Uh, the next one uh, AO map I'll go for so I'll just click back on this stingray node here um, I will rename that in a moment as well um, AO map uh, ambient occlusion is where light is occluded because it's in a gap. So you can see the gaps between all these tiles slightly darker. That means less light should bounce around in those those areas. Um, again, that's not actually changing this uh, image up here. So I'll go back to my main node there. I'm going to rename this now. Floor uh, tiles. And because I haven't told it to use these other maps, so I can press normal map and you can see how that jumps from AO should also just give a different um, different look to that as well so I can change the the look of this back to the, the shader ball to see how that that shows up um, I can see how that does actually make a change at that angle where there's different light patterns so it's useful to be able to change those so we do have these Roughness maps, it's worth getting these in because you do get the extra detail with this. 
um, and it will improve the look as you go forward. So again, I can see these nodes all linking in. So the, these files are feeding into this texture, and this is really the, the network that you're you're working to within here. So the roughness map, uh, and I'm not using an emissive map. An emissive one will make the some glow or the item glow. But I will add the metallic map. Um, I don't actually have a metallic map um, within these files, but I'm going to use the specular map as well, and that will just show me where some reflection might come in. So that set up the floor tile for me. So going back into the main Maya viewport window, again I'm going to make sure I turn textured on. It doesn't remember it between scenes. And I'm going to make a plane in this. I want quite a large plane, so I'm going to do this uh, a thousand, so that would be like 10 meters. And also I've got subdivisions in here. If I press F on the keyboard that will zoom me out slightly if I select it. Uh, I don't need all of these subdivisions because it is literally a uh, square. Um, and it will be transparent on the underside when it's in Unity. So now I can right click and hold down and I can assign existing material floor tile and that will come up with my, my textured item in there. Finally, send that over to Unity. I've got it selected already, so send selection and PBS floor tile. So I'm using the same names as I'm having the uh, within Maya. But I also remember to save the scene in Maya as well uh, in my scenes folder and floor tile. I should also really change that item as well. Floor tile. So I can look at that in Unity. It's asking me to fix the normal map. So as it imports the textures, it just does need to know which ones are which um, or what type of texture they are. Um, and from the materials tab, I can extract the te textures if I haven't done so already. Uh, I'm choosing a folder to put those into rather than directly there um, and extract materials as well. So I'll just put that into the, the main folder here. So now my floor tile should show up in my scene. Uh, and I just want to blue that slightly and I'll just drop that down. So I can see how that comes in and you've actually got quite a realistic look on that as well. Um, so these textures are a good color but I think actually if you're working uh, extensively with texture maps, you can find better ones which will, will help that the look of that as well. So I'll just kind of try rotating these uh, again just to see if they do show up. You can kind of just see the sky reflecting those, but they're not reflecting great. Uh, so the use of texture really kind of texture maps brings that out within it. There is a whole range of different textures we can use. Um, so try downloading some and bringing them into your scene with that. And we can build up quite a complex scene. Um, the other thing to do is to remember to, when you import this, go to the model settings and tell it to generate colliders. So we're making environments so we want things to, to collide. So that'll bring that in and that'll allow us to use our first person controller on this and move around the scene.